Howdy folks, what if there was a machine that could do 3D printing, laser, and CNC all in one? <laughs> there is. We're going to look, start looking at this bad boy today. So hang out in the garage and let's see what we're going to get into. So a machine that can do all three. Yeah, Snapmaker sent me the A250T and it came in two big boxes. The first box we're gonna take a look at is the machine and the three functions, of course, that it can do. So you know me, I'm not big on doing open box thingies or whatever, so we'll just take a quick look at the boxes that came with the machine itself and we'll also take a look at the parts that came in the boxes and then we're gonna throw this thing together real quick because I really wanna get into the functions on this machine and test, test all three of the possibilities. But also, there's a second box. And we'll get to the second box a little later on. But right now, let's look at the machine and the boxes that it came in. So after unloading the big box, this is what you're into with uh, Snapmaker. You have boxes of stuff, but you've got, they even sent a really good high quality, a full spool of three D printing filament. They uh, you have your three heads here, which will be your lay. Uh, that'll be your 3D printer, your laser, and your CNC attachment for your power head, power modules. You've got your working plate and all the other structural parts that will go ahead to build and make this machine. And that's just the beginning of it. We have a second box here, which is going to be open later. Right now, we got to put this together to get this machine up and rolling. So later on, we'll get into the box. The other box a full blown enclosure designed and built just for this machine. Awesome. All right, so all those boxes that came in, the big box has been, a, I've unpacked it all, and we've got the plate and of course the gantry and the pieces that we need to put this together with. We've got the whole machine is basically, here it is laid out out of all the boxes that were inside the big box. Also have another big box sitting here, but that big box is the enclosure from what I understand. So we'll we'll get to that shortly, but right now what we're really focused on is the machine and the three things that it can do. Can it do all three really well? Uh, I've been told it can, so we're, we're gonna definitely find out. But um, we've got uh, quite a thick manual to go through, so we'll start assembly and when we come back, hopefully, I'll have all this together and we'll have the machine up and ready to rock and roll so we can get to our first test, which will probably be, I guess, the 3D printer. We'll start with that and then we'll move over to uh, the laser and then maybe finish up with the CNC machine. I'm not sure how I'm going to break this up. It might be three videos because there's three things this machine can do. But I'm really after this 3D printer first because I've heard that on the 3D print, this thing is not only a good machine for it, but it's also fast. We're gonna find out. Boom, we've got this, the, <laughs> we've got the A250T uh, together from Snapmaker, and we've, I've set it up so it'll run the 3D printer uh, function first, but it's just, the assembly was very good, and the manual is excellent. It shows you and walks you through each step of putting this bad boy together. Uh, there is one uh, thing in there that I noticed, and it says leave the screws loose on certain parts until you're centered or lined up, and then tighten the screws. And again, that makes total sense because it's a 3D printer, it's a laser, it's a CNC machine. Everything here has to be nicely lined up. The other thing that immediately I noticed was the bed is on a fixed set here on the bottom. There's no funny, you know, adjustment stuff. Everything is done from the head and from the controls of the motors. And that was like, this is a little bit different. This is a little bit new. And it has auto bed leveling. And so once you do that, then you can use your little uh, calibration card to set the nozzle to just sort of like bring it down that one point, you know, one millimeter to get it just exactly where it wants to be in order to set down a good first layer for 3D printing, of course, or whatever you're going to be doing of the three functions. The software is awesome. It's just unbelievable because the software that you get from Snapmaker has its own slicer in-house and that slicer offers 3D printing, the laser, and the CNC machine all in its package. So you're getting a lot more than just the machine. You're getting this huge backup of software that's going to be able to run this machine. Uh, the other thing from Snapmaker, of course, we'll get into is what we just talked about a little bit. I mentioned it was the, uh, there's an enclosure because 
This will uh, allow you higher temperatures than the other 3D printers that I have. I have five of them here right now. None of them can run the temperatures that this one can run. Also, this is supposed to be, like I said, faster. The features are off the wall. This thing here, for example, is just, it's like a cell phone, but it's really good. It's a nice touch screen. It's on a nice flexible cable. Your power supply sits off to one side and it's nicely uh, cabled so that you can put the power supply either side of the machine. You can put it wherever you want, you know. The little bracket back here, I'd heard some complaints from other reviewers and I didn't have any problem with the, uh, in this case, the PLA. Also, when you put your PLA in here at the top, you start at the top, it takes it and runs it through and sets it up for you so it's ready to rock and roll when it comes time to doing a 3D print. And again, it, the, the auto feed and everything in here was just, it was amazing. The bed leveling, amazing. You know, uh, just the overall feel of the machine is that it's, it's really good quality. This is not, this is definitely, you know, in a class all its own, especially the fact that it will run all three functions, which is just, it just walks away from the crowd. So how many machines out there can run all three like this and have software that backs up, has a beautiful manual, good um, assembly, I don't know of anything. So the Snapmaker is sort of on in its own classification because there just isn't a whole lot of this kind of thing laying around. I guess we'll say for our first test, we're going to run the 3D printer again, but this time we're doing an original Benchy with, uh, you know, average settings. I didn't really push the machine hard or anything, but I'm showing, and if it's correct, I believe it will be, it's showing 53 minutes for a Benchy. Most of my machines, such as this one right here, will take about an hour and a half to make on one of my inexpensive 3D printers. This one here is doing it in under an hour, so yeah, it's already kind of indicating it is fast, but let's see how nice that Benchy comes out. Well, we're about halfway through the print. We're at 18 minutes, or almost uh, 19 minutes right now, and it's already looking really good, even though it's showing 23% complete. But it's, yeah, it seems to be doing pretty well. These are not cranked up speeds either, so we could produce the Benchy probably faster than this. While we're running the Benchy off, I thought I'd mention the materials. This is rated for uh, the course PLA, but it's also rated for PETG, and also it runs TPU. TPU can be kind of tricky on different machines, but apparently this one's rated for it. But there's far more here, again, than meets the eye. It's also rated for ASA, ABS, and nylon uh, filaments. That is pretty darn spectacular because I don't really have another machine in here that has those ratings. Now granted with ASA or ABS or something, you really should have your enclosure set up, I guess, to run those materials, but it's rated for, and like I said, it can develop more heat than the other machines I have. So in, in the 3D printing world, this is actually a pretty impressive machine without even looking at the laser and the CNC uh, features just yet. Also, before I forget, uh, we, are on, we have Wi-Fi. So I can send this file over from the laptop or even from a phone to tell it to go ahead and make this, uh, produce this part for me. So the next uh, feature I need to look at is this right here. This is unbelievable. If your PLA doesn't stick to this, you need to give up 3D printing. <laughs> and uh, Snapmaker makes it so that you can, if, you know, when this gets old and tired, you just flip it over and you can go back at it with a nice clean side and, you know, Go to your go to your next print, you know, but we'll continue using the old board for the time being, I guess. <laughs> the uh, PLA is really hard to get off, so you need to leave this down on a flat surface, let it cool, and uh, be prepared to have a little arm wrestle to get that off. Now, the big time thing. Okay, this was uh, pretty interesting. It, it, it sort of, yeah, broke some records around here. My big machine... Uh, takes about an hour and a half for a little benchy like that one right there with the default type settings. This one here, the uh, settings were again not cranked all the way up or anything, so the default settings put it at about an hour and I think it was an hour and three minutes. So that is still, that's pretty cool. Uh, a little bit of tweaking, I think I could get the benchy out in about 47 minutes or so, but you know, at some point quality starts to fall off when you start pushing things too fast and too hard. Plus, uh, this is the cheapest PLA you can get a hold of on the internet, I think, right now. I don't pay a whole lot per roll for this particular uh, PLA, but it works, you know, it does the trick. Now, the sound, the loudness, the microphone picks up quite a bit of noise, so it's really hard for you guys to really hear what's going on. 
it's not that bad at all. It's uh, it's no it's no louder or quieter than any 3D printer I've ever had. In fact, the 3D printer itself is really quiet. The noise, the only noise really, is the power supply, and that's sort of like good because the fans are in there doing their pro, you know, doing their thing, helping to keep everything cool inside the uh, electronics. So I don't really have a you know I don't have any real issue with that. Apparently, this is a good 3D printer, but. The other thing in the book is they also talk in length about laser engraving and their software includes uh, some, I think a project or two for laser engraving, which means you could do some pretty fantastic things right out of the box, as they say, with their software to be able to, you know, use the laser. And also it gets into uh, detail over setting up and using the CNC feature with this machine. So. Like I said, this is really kind of a little mind blowing because the machine offers all three of these things and it looks like it, it might even be good for doing all three things. I don't see anything wrong as a 3D printer. I think I'm really impressed, but I think what's really impressive too is the, the software behind it. You've got a good uh, guide here book that will you know walk you through the features of each of those three items and uh, talk a little bit more about the enclosure and the good things about the enclosure. Yeah. yeah, back to that crazy open box thing, but we open the box and we are presented with this beautiful, again, start guide with gorgeous pictures of the, uh, with the machine, but also an explanation of how to put together the parts that are gonna be going into this to assemble the enclosure. The enclosure is way more sophisticated than what you think. You're getting a huge quality project here in front of you that you're gonna be putting together. And yeah, there's there's even electrical connections, there's even a duct uh, system for air. And of course, when you put it all together, you have this amazing uh, enclosure with LED lighting and exhaust and everything on it. So. Yeah, this is no, yeah, this is no joke enclosure. Yeah, not like some of the other uh, uh, 3D printing companies out there. Look at this, they've got electrical connectors in here, LED lighting system, and everything is on really nice, looks like 2020 type of, I'm gonna, not gonna say aluminum, but it is some kind of a metal uh, barring that puts this whole thing together. And if you look at the picture immediately, you know, yeah, you're talking big, but you're talking extreme quality in this case. So yeah, the A250T and the A350T, I guess the enclosure will fit either one of those machines with the 350 being the larger one with the bigger bed and things on it. What an awesome, just look at this thing. I mean, this is unbelievable. Anyways, the next video we come back with, we'll have the enclosure together and we'll have it up with the machine so we can do the next test, such as the laser and the CNC. Yep. Meanwhile, back at our 3D printing world here, uh, I put this file over here and also loaded the worst PLA I have. This stuff does not like to stick to any beds. It doesn't like to work. It seems to clog the nozzle easily and it gets stringy and it gets really weird. So I recalibrated the bed here just to make sure that everything was set just to you know for a perfect print and it started out and it looks to me like the, it's printing it and it's running it and it, actually it's looking really good so I'm gonna say guys as a 3d printer it's already a winner without the other two options okay the specifications on this one uh, it's aluminum alloys which you could tell it's really nicely built but it's also Wi-Fi capable USB cable or USB disk which is what I'm running off of right now it also has a uh, five foot, uh, excuse me, it has a five inch Android system that, that looks like a cell phone going on there. That's really a uh, nice interface, really. It's probably one of them, actually it is the nicest interface I think I've ever had. The software, which is by Snapmaker, it is third party, but it's, you know, by Luban, but it's also, it's just right for the machine. It's tuned for the machine. It'll support files like STL, but also supports OBG, SVG, JPEG, PNP, PNG, more formats are gonna be added. But um, the OS, I wanted to talk about that because I wasn't sure whether I had that right or not, but it's Mac, Windows, and Linux. Yeah, power rated at 320 watts. Now, the build size for this particular, the, the A250T, 230 millimeters by 250 by 235. So it's a little bit bigger bed than four of the machines that I have sitting in my printer farm right now. Bed temperatures can get up to 100 Celsius. 
which is, you know, that is pretty much normal these days, but layer resolution can be from 50 to 300 micron. Nozzle temperatures up to 275 Celsius. Nozzle diameter, of course, is the 0.4 like everybody else has, but supported materials was PLA, ABS, TPU, wood, um, PETG. I mean, it's just the list of supported materials for filaments is, is yeah, it's pretty long and it's pretty, pretty amazing. The uh, actual work area is actually you know, 230 by 250, which is, a, we're talking about the bed. The laser is a little bit in question until we actually run it, I guess, but it's it's rated at 1600 megawatt, or milliwatt, milli, <laughs> megawatt, <laughs> milliwatt, <clears throat> yeah. And the wavelength is 450 with a class four uh, laser. Supported materials, wood, leather, plastic, fabric, uh, paper, non-transparent acrylic and more so yeah now let's get to the cnc side of this thing and again the work area will be the 230 by 250 by 180 millimeter work area the uh, shank diameters are run from 0.5 millimeter to 0.6.3 which is like a quarter of an inch uh, material uh, shank uh, diameter spindle speed from 6,000 to 12,000 which is actually higher than one of the dedicated CNC machines that I have in here right now. And again, supported materials, wood, acrylic, PCB, carbon fiber sheet, jade, uh, in the list access, and just says, etc. as in, yeah, you know, whatever else you wanna throw at it, it sounds like it would pretty much cut it through. And this uh, this whole book, I, I just can't say enough about it because look at the, the, the fabric and the, the actual way they made this book is just, it is incredible. There's the toolbox. I was going to show that to you. And the toolbox is something you better hang on to because as you change heads back and forth, you want to be able to relate, you know, back to the toolbox to get any, you know, parts you need or any fitting changes or screws or something. You just, I would keep it all together. That would be a really important thing. And there's a lot of uh, detail in each of the pages over each uh, of the assemblies, whether it be, you know, CNC, laser, running a 3D printer, whatever. Each one is covered in a separate section to explain what you need to do to get it set up for that particular function. So, yeah, this is uh, the most serious, awesome thing I think I've had in here, and wow, I can't remember when. Before I forget, uh, there will be a link in the description below from Snapmaker, and it's a sale link at a sale price that starts February the uh, 20th. I think that's today, yeah. This starts immediately. And that was one of the reasons they said, hold back till the 20th, because then we're gonna have a sale on it. So you guys will be able to look at a very good price for this machine. If you have only one spot in your shop for a dedicated area like that, for say a 3D printer or a laser or a CNC machine, why not have a dedicated area where it's, it's all three in one? Now, the uh, enclosure, I'm gonna put that together. And Thursday, uh, we'll take a look at the laser uh, option on this machine. I'm gonna give a gold star to the 3D printer. I was really concerned about the, like, you know, the whole idea of three things in one is, uh, you know, but as a 3D printer, I'm watching it run right now, even it's doing a, a pretty incredible print. But as a 3D printer, it seems like it's a really good machine. So uh, Thursday, we'll have the enclosure up and also the laser running and we'll take a look at some 3d or take a look at some laser uh projects on it and then i guess monday we'll try to wrap it up with the cnc function because i want to see uh each area and just see how it measures up uh that spindle speed by the way kind of surprised me that's you know like i said i have a dedicated one here that's got a maximum of 10,000. it will go 12,000. so already it's starting to look like uh it may be a very good machine i'm hoping in all three categories. And uh, if that's the case, then who's this machine for? Well, let's start out with the idea that if you only have one dedicated area in your workshop where you want uh, a 3D printer or a laser, or you want to have a CNC machine in that one area or something, you could buy this machine and you have all three. Uh, Price-wise, I've taken a look at it and if it's that good, which it seems to be in all three categories, then it is actually, you're sort of like, rather than buying three machines, you're saving money because you've got it all in one shot and that enclosure is gonna be really, I think it's gonna be very impressive. You know, it uh, is dedicated, but it's also well-built 
in order to enhance all the features of the machine itself. So you're, you're sort of coming out you know, cheaper and less space taken up, but you're having all three functions available to your hobby or your craft or you know, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, the other possibilities, of course, would be something like, uh, say, uh, you know, your you know, dad and his son or something, uh, one wants to run a CNC machine, the other one wants to run 3D printing then the two of you could get together and buy the machine together say and you know you both have what you sort of need or want for projects and stuff there may be some uh you know times when there'll be a conflict of who wants to use it next or something <laughs> but you know it's 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 a really who's it for and why you know well it's as three machines it's sort of like yeah it's cheaper than buying three machines <laughs> you know and having all of it in one and generally uh if you're doing uh, that sort of thing, and or you know, say you can't make up your mind, you've been sitting there on the fence, going, you know, should I put all my money in a little CNC machine, or should I put all my eggs in one basket and buy the 3D printer, or this machine takes care of that. You know, it gives you the option of all three possible hobbies, crafts, or even doing a little bit of uh, business. You know, because I've got some machines that just are single standalone 3D printers that do business, uh, you know, do the 3D, pr uh, part of the 3D printing farming for me. So, you know, you can do it, you know, it, it is possible. The quality of the machine is so far, it's just showing to be just off the charts. It's, this thing is just beyond me. I'm, a, I'm just shocked at overall the quality build. And right now, just listening to it, you can, you guys, I don't know if you can even hear it running, but it's running over here in the shop right now. It's got a, uh, about a four and a half hour project right now going on, so it's going to be, it'll be pretty when it's all said and done. Hopefully, maybe we'll show it to you Thursday too. So when we come back Thursday, uh, uh, we'll have the enclosure, we'll do the, the laser, and we'll uh, do some laser engraving and some fancy cutting, but we'll also put it a little bit like I did today, uh, because let's face it, that PLA that I just stuck in that I'm running off right now is an absolute torture test because it is the nastiest PLA I've ever had in here. I won't say who supplied it, but uh, it's uh, the color is Cosmos, and it's supplied by certain machine uh, 3D printing companies. And I will highly recommend if you come up on something like that. Uh, I wouldn't buy it myself. Yeah, if you're unless you really have to have something that's got that wild finish or something, I would sort of you know steer away from it. There are some other fancier ones out there also that are uh, glossy or silky or something, and they might be okay. This particular one has been absolute horror story, but it's this machine seems to be handling it, which is like, whoa, okay. Uh, I did not expect to have a good 3D printer with a three-in-one machine. So again, you know, good, you know. Uh, thank you so much for watching Copy of Tools, and please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. Uh, we have got all kinds of cool stuff coming in too. Yeah, this is not, you know, <laughs> this is not for the rest of the year. Oh, no, no. We got more stuff coming in like this. But um, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll understand. I'm going to do three videos because it is sort of three machines in one. And I, I think in some ways that's kind of a, it's a cool idea, but it as an old schooler, it kind of scares me a little bit. But so far it's proving that, you know, maybe uh, I'm too judgmental. Maybe it can do all three really well. I think it can, actually. <laughs> Getting pretty surprised. Okay, I'm out of here. Hey, over and out.